Welcome to the solo series of the Let's Get Visible podcast with Dawes Brown. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Let's Get Visible podcast with me, Dawes Brown. Now today we're diving into a topic that's incredibly crucial in today's digital age, and that's building a personal brand online. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, or someone who's looking to make a mark in your industry, having a strong personal brand can open up a world of opportunities. So let's get started started with some tips and strategies that will help you stand out using your personal brand. So first off, why is personal branding important? Well, in a world where everyone is vying for attention, having a strong personal brand helps you stand out from the crowd. It builds trust and credibility, making it easier for people to connect with you and your business. So essentially, it's your reputation amplified by the reach of the internet. So what are some of the first steps that someone should take when starting to build their personal brand online? Well, the first step is self-discovery. You need to understand who you are, what you stand for, and what unique value you bring to the table. This involves identifying your strengths, your passions, and your core values. Now, once you've got that down, you can start crafting your personal brand around these specific elements. So that brings me to our next point. How do you identify and define your unique value proposition or differentiator? Now think about what sets you apart from others in your field or your niche. What experiences, skills or perspectives do you have that are unique? This is your differentiator and it should be at the heart of your personal brand. Now, a big part of personal branding is also storytelling. So what role does storytelling play in personal branding and how can you craft your own compelling story? Well, your your story is what makes you relatable and rememberable. It's about sharing your journey, the challenges you've faced and the successes you've achieved by being authentic and transparent. Now, people connect with people and with real stories, not polished facades. Now, let's take a look at social media and how this also helps with your personal branding online. So, which social media platforms are most effective for building your personal brand and why? Well, the thing is, is that there's loads of different social media profiles out there to choose from, and each of them serve a different purpose. Now, if you're on a platform like LinkedIn, this is great for professional networking. Um, Twitter is great for thought leadership, and Instagram is great for storytelling. We also have TikTok, which is um, our short form content or videos. And again, it's really about choosing a platform that is going to best align with your brand and your business and where your audience actually spends their time. Now, maintaining consistency is key and I'm I'm terrible at this. You will see me kind of be on social media and then disappear into my Batwoman cave for months, months, but consistency and persistency is absolutely key. Okay, so you do need to maintain this across different platforms, but it's not about on being on every single platform that's out there. Again, it's about choosing ones that are going to resonate with you, with your brand, and it's where your audience hangs out as well. Now, consistency in your messaging and your visual identity um, really helps build recognition and trust with your audience. But it's also important to tweak your content slightly to fit each platform or to be platform agnostic, right? So if you're on LinkedIn, for example, your posts might be just a little bit more professional than the posts that you would share through Instagram stories, for example which are more casual and kind of like behind the scenes of your business. 
Now, we also need to look at the types of content that are most effective for showcasing your expertise and your personality. And the ones that I truly love, of course, are podcasts, uh, but videos are great as well, and blog posts, as well as social media updates where you can share all of your knowledge and really showcase your personality as well. Now, sharing insights, tips, and personal anecdotes that reflect your brand's voice and values helps with engagement of that content because it not only attracts new followers, but it's also there to establish you as the expert and authority in your field. Now, visual branding also plays a crucial role in this mix. So how important is visual branding, like your logos, your colors, your design, in creating that strong personal brand? Well, visual elements like these logos and colors and typography do create a cohesive look, right? Like you want to make sure that if someone goes and visits you on Instagram and then goes and finds your website, that your brand is easily recognizable. You don't want there to be a huge disconnect with your personal brand because you have a completely different aesthetic on your Instagram page, um, for example, than you do on your website. So I definitely would highly recommend um, to invest in some professional design that really ensures your identity identity looks and is aligned with your brand message. Now, growing and engaging your online community is also another essential aspect. So what strategies can you use to grow and engage your online community or following? Again, the C word comes up here and that's consistency. Consistency is absolutely key. So making sure that when you have something to say that you're posting that information, that experience online and really using that opportunity to interact with your audience, particularly responding to comments um, or participating in some of those relevant, you know, conversations. Collaborations can be an absolute game changer. So how can you leverage collaborations and partnerships in order to enhance your personal brand's visibility? Well, partnering with other brands can help introduce you to new audiences, right? Because when someone mentions you to their audience, you've now tapped into what we like to call other people's audiences or OPA. And this can again really help to add credibility to your brand. So look for collaborations that align with your business and with your values, as well as your goals in order to try and achieve maximum impact from that. Now, with everything, um, there's also some common pitfalls that we want to try and, you know, steer away from. So what are some of the common mistakes that people make when trying to build their personal brand and how can they avoid them? Well, one common mistake is trying to appeal to everyone, like you're just trying to be everything to everyone. Your brand should attract your ideal audience. It should not be attracting just anyone. Okay, so it should also be repelling the people that you don't necessarily want um, in your business or, or, you know, in your field. So making sure, again, that you are being consistent with your messaging, because this is going to build trust and again, establish you as that expert and it's going to bring in the right people to your business. Now, measuring effectiveness of all of these different things is absolutely crucial. So how can you measure the effectiveness of your personal branding efforts and make adjustments as needed? One of the things I love to use in order to track engagement are analytics tools. Okay, so you can see this either using um, the analytics tools on your social media platforms, but you can also do this using Google Analytics. Okay, so you need to pay attention to the types of content that is resonating with your audience the most. And then that's when you're going to steer the bus or steer the ship in the right direction and adjust your marketing strategy accordingly. Now, at the heart of personal branding 
it's authenticity. Okay, so what role does authenticity play in personal branding and how can you ensure that you're staying true to yourself? Well, authenticity builds trust and again, fosters those really genuine connections with others. So being honest and transparent about your experiences and sharing your real thoughts also shows that you're not afraid to be vulnerable. Okay, you're staying true to yourself and you're attracting the right type of audience and building that loyalty with them because you're just being yourself and I know it's cliche but there really is only one you out there and that's who people want to see okay it's not something that's fabricated but something that really shows your authenticity now one of the other things I wanted to mention is managing your online reputation which is equally important so how can you do this and how can you deal with maybe some negative feedback or criticism you know that you're receiving now it's incredibly important that you're responding to these types of comments um, in a real professional way, but also doing this constructively, okay? So we wanna be able to address any valid concerns that they may have um, and use this feedback as also an opportunity to improve because we're just not going to make everyone happy 100% of the time. And these things from time to time, you know, can and will happen. So building a strong personal brand also means standing by your values and actions, even when you're faced with negativity. Now, the next part of this is SEO. So many people don't realize, but when it comes to your brand, um, SEO also plays a really significant role in this process and boosting that online visibility. Okay, so when it comes to influencing your personal brand's online presence, um, what should you do and what should you be aware of in the SEO space? Well, some things that I would recommend is definitely focusing on high quality, relevant content that meets your user needs. Okay, so the reason why people go to Google to Google a question or a problem is to try and find an answer to that question or problem. That's the whole reason behind them using Google to begin with. So you want to make sure that you're not creating content for the sake of creating content, but you're creating valuable content that is really going to respond to that user's needs. It's also important that when you are working on an SEO strategy that you're keeping up with best practices and making sure that you're not just focused focusing on, again, doubling or tripling your traffic or being on page one, position one for, you know, five keywords. It's about looking at it holistically and, and really recognizing through the information you can see in Google searches, which is completely free, the types of information that online users are actually searching for. Okay, and making sure that you're aligning with the types of answers um, that people are, are searching for online. Now, market trends. This can really give you an edge for your brand and for your business. So how can understanding market trends and consumer behavior help you in building a personal brand? Um, and what methods can you use? So a really good way is to look at Google Trends, which is an actual tool which is completely free, where you can actually see um, the types of content topics and information that people are searching for. They're really seeing, okay, here are the you know bits of information within my industry or within my niche. I've looked at this through Google Trends and I'm now going to incorporate that into my marketing strategy. So that can be a really big game changer for your brand and for your business. Now, there's also some tools and resources that we can use. Ones that I've used for many, many years, and I'm sure you've heard of it before, but Canva. Canva does a great job if you're not a graphic designer like me, um, where it can pre-create some of these, you know, posts and to really keep, again, that consistent look and feel for your brand online. You can also obviously use other tools um, through social media management, as well as Google Analytics in order to track your performance and 
really start looking at the data in order to, you know, make some of those important decisions for your business. But using some of these tools can really help to streamline your efforts and really help you to enhance that brand presence. Now, finally, let's wrap up and look to the future. So what do I see as the future of personal branding and how can businesses prepare for these changes? Well, personal branding is something that's going to continue to evolve and change. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of um, updates in technology like artificial intelligence and obviously social media trends, you know, change on a regular basis. So it's really important for businesses to stay informed about emerging trends and also be willing to experiment. So personal branding and marketing is not something that you can always, you know, predict. It's not a straight line. It's usually things that turn in, you know, circles and it kind of goes down and goes back up again. And you have to be able to take on, obviously, the, the information that you can use, the tools that you can use, but just understand that it's not always going to be, you know, a straight line when you're getting visible, when you're getting your business and your brand out there, that it sometimes takes some trial and error to find the right fit for you and your business. And don't forget as well is that as your business, you know, grows, it is going to change. And so you need to be able to, you know, see that change and work with that change and make sure you're integrating your strategy into that as well. But definitely, again, you know, investing maybe in some ongoing education or just staying ahead of the game really is the key to being able to build that strong personal brand for your business. Now, I work with clients in a few different capacities, but one of the ways in which I love working with them is the one-to-one -one coaching. So I do run an SEO business bootcamp and an accelerator program, which is a customized, two sets of customized programs that is there to help your business and to help your brand get visible online organically. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and visit letsgetvisible.com.au. But until next time, have a great day, everyone, and look forward to our next episode.